Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and we've been talking about MPhil and PhD. So in this video is all about the differences that you need to know between MPhil and PhD because I've got this question a lot of times. So stay tuned and watch the video. So as I told you, in this video we're going to discuss about the difference between MPhil and PhD. Now both of them are heavyweight courses, you know, research oriented courses. Now normally when you are in the field of science, you know about this idea of research because uh, science generally can be divided into two different parts, either you go to the research work or to the academics. Now and sometimes people also shift from academics to research because always it's, it's an integral part of science. So while if you want to enroll, you're thinking you're at MSc and you're thinking of doing MPhil or PhD, which one you should choose. So let's begin with the differences. The difference between the two, you know, PhD and MPhil. Uh, both of them research based work, but PhD is a much bigger degree, much bigger work, a lot of work and much bigger thesis that you need to write. While MPhil is comparatively shorter work and short thesis that you need to write. Now in both this case, what you need to do, there's a fundamental difference between MPhil and PhD. What we do in MPhil is that it's a coursework, that means you read theory and uh, you also read modern research papers. And what you need to do, you need to look for the re recent research that is being going on in different subjects and you want to recreate that research a little bit, modify that research a little bit and substitute it with something else. So it's not entirely original work. It's not 100% original work. It's like uh, like 50% original or 60% original based on the type of modification that you do. But it's about an existing work, little modification, and you get only two, uh, two years to complete that degree. And among that two years, almost 50% of the time, you need to devote to understand the theory and also understanding the other concepts of writing research papers, comprehending research papers, defending theses, doing seminars, doing presentation and all these other skills. Along with that, you do a research work solely approximately for one year and you need to write a thesis on that and to submit that thesis into a panel. And the panel will verify the thesis and you need to defend that thesis in front of a research publication panel. And once it's passed, then also you need to do a written test regarding the coursework so both the marks are cumulatively added and if you qualify more than 55% they will be given the MPhil degree. Well, I said it. That's all about MPhil. Now what about PhD? PhD is much difficult because it takes like 5 years in minimum, more than 5, 5, 6, 7, even 8 years in some cases. It will take that high years, you know, 5 years is the minimum. And that 5 years, first 2 years you will be a junior research fellow, the last 3 years you will be a senior research fellow and during that time the one year period is for the coursework, the rest of the four or five years will be completely the research work. And that research work is creating something new. That's the deal about PhD, that is Doctor of Philosophy, while MPhil is Master of Philosophy. So in Doctor of Philosophy or PhD, your idea is recreating knowledge. That means that whatever knowledge is existing, you know that existing knowledge and then utilize that existing knowledge to recreate something new that's all about phd because you are building new knowledge you are giving something to the whole world about a particular concept that's the idea about uh, phd and for this four or five years of work you need to do a lot of hard work a lot of big experiments and at the end that work needs to be pinned down as a thesis and that thesis will be much bigger than two to three, four times bigger than the thesis written in MPhil and then again you need to submit that into you know PhD committee and they are going to verify that, they are going to, if, if there is a problem they will, they will tell you to rewrite that, you need to put that into a paper, a research journal, they will publish it and again you need to defend your thesis in front of the whole panel with seminars and also other presentation. Once you qualify that, you will be given the PhD degree. Although in that case there is no mandatory written exams always but yes there will be con continuous interviews in different part of your preparation phase with the PhD committee. You need to sit for that, you need to give all these interviews and even to convert from GRF to SRF you need to also go through interview phases. So in all this case it's more of a you know technical analysis, it's more of a, a presentation skills that, that you need and higher presentation skills that you need uh, to complete 
PhD, which is not that much required in case of uh, MPhil entirely because it also 50% of it depends on the coursework. So that's the difference. Another big difference, you know, in, in uh, MPhil, the coursework is more and the PhD, the coursework is less. In MPhil, the coursework at the very beginning, you know, four semesters are out there in two years. So in the first year, four courses, second semester, three courses, third semester, two courses, and the last semester, no courses at all. So all these things works like that, the same way. Okay, so while in PhD, the coursework is only for that one year stretch, nothing more than that. Okay, so that's another big difference. Another difference in terms of working experience in both uh, MPhil and PhD, you'll be given stipend. The stipend for PhD is more, for MPhil is less. But the approach of work for PhD, you are more of a bound because you know you have a supervisor who will supervise all of your work, that will be the lab in charge. Uh, under uh, that in charge you will be doing your research work so that in charge will be telling you how to design the experiments how to conduct the experiments and they will continuously checking the experiments whether you are doing it right or wrong and all these discussions so mostly you will be under a better pressure and higher pressure in PhD while in MPhil it's more of a little bit of a more independent research where you will you, get more of a room for, for outstanding because you know in that case the you will also have a supervisor but the supervisor's job is not bound because the supervisor's work is not to do a completely unique work so you can prescribe this thing so you'll get more freedom to work with that's another thing in MPhil now uh, the completion after the MPhil you won't be given any prefix to your name so it will be simply as uh, MSc MPhil in case of PhD you'll be given doctor so doctor and then your name so that's another weightage uh, to your name that can be added after PhD only which is not possible after MPhil and another thing is that regarding the enrollment, MPhil requires uh, direct written examination and interview, 75% in written, 25% of the marks required for this uh, interview to finally qualify. Altogether, you need to score more than 60-70% to, to qualify into MPhil degree in recognized university. While in PhD, you need to qualify CSI, which is NET or GATE, and utilizing that score, you need to go and qualify for that exam. So that's the difference between uh, the MPhil degree and PhD degree. Now the course is which one you should choose. If you want to do higher research, if you want to do a complete research and based on your whole career with PhD, obviously go for PhD. And actually there is no difference and selection pressure between MPhil and PhD. PhD is in top, MPhil is in bottom. So first do MPhil, then go for PhD. That's the idea. So this, the hierarchy will be BSc, then MSc, then MPhil, then PhD. So many people can do like BSc, MSc directly to PhD because it will save two years of time, right? That's the idea. So whether you will do MPhil or not, it's up to you. But yes, if you are trying to go through NET and actually get through NET exam and you're failing like one, two years, I think it's better to join for MPhil. If not, if you think that you're going to qualify within one year or something, prepared well, then make this dedication and qualify net and directly enroll into PhD, which will save some time while doing that. That's the idea. That's the difference between MPhil and PhD. So stay tuned and watch all the other videos of the series. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like this.